Hey everyone! Today, I'm moving on to the second to last part of my Dominaria set review. And today we are working on green, my second favorite color. Um, so if you haven't watched any of the prior parts of this, and you're listening to this for information, I'd recommend going back to the episode on white, because I talk about kind of like how I'm evaluating these cards in that video at the beginning. In short, I'm valuing these for limited with me pointing out when I am looking to use them in my commander decks. I've done deck decks on. Alright, so first up we have Adventurous Impulse, which is a green for sorcery that says look at the top three cards of your library, mirror fuel a creature or land card from among them, and put it into your hand, and put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Um, honestly, this is just decent card selection. Um, unlike the white one, which only hit historic permanence, this one hits creatures or lands, which is going to be most of your deck limited. You typically don't want more than like four, maybe five non-creature spells in a normal limited deck, so the likeliness of hitting all of those is very low. Um, so it's it's going to hit most of the time, and it's just decent card selection. Obviously, I wouldn't take it super highly, but it's one I'm not unhappy playing in my decks. Just getting that little extra card selection. Next up is Ancient Animus. It's one green for an instant, which has put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control if it's legendary. Then it fights target creature and opponent controls. So. If your creature isn't legendary, you don't have the legendaries, this is just Pounds, which is a fine card. It just fights another creature. And the additional upside that if it's legendary, um, it gets to be buffed up a little bit and becomes a hunt weak, and all at instant speed is quite nice. I, I rather like Ancient Animus. Um, yeah, no, I don't have much else to say besides it's a, probably going to be one of the, like the, your staple like, green removal spells. Um, obviously it's not as good as Hunt Week because having that plus one plus one counter actually really helps when you're looking at fighting, but um, even if not, Ancient Animus is a solid card. Next up is Arbor and Armament, which is one green for a instant that says put a plus one plus one counter onto a creature and it gains reach until end of turn. Um, the reach is situational, and normally on combat tricks I don't like just getting plus one plus one, but because it's a counter, um, it makes me more inclined to like like the spell. Um, I mean, I still don't think it's great as a combat trick, but it, you can do worse. The fact that it sticks around is relevant a lot of the time, and sometimes the reach might be relevant for ambushing a problematic flyer, but usually not. Next up is Baloth Gorger. It's two green green for a 4-4. Four, 4 four. mana for a 4-4, four, four, that's a good card. Um, with kicker for 4. So if you pay 8 mana, it enters with 3 plus all those counters, so it becomes a 7-7. Seven, seven, which is, I mean, a good card as well. So if you have the mana to go to 8, you can play it. If not, you are more than happy playing 4 4 4 fours. So I like Baloth Gorger a lot. Just a good creature. Next up is Broken Bond for Nyssa, um, which is one green for destroy target artifact or enchantment, and then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. This is this is just a sideboard card. You're not playing this main deck. Maybe if it's like going late, pick one up for the sideboard. If not, it's not a card you're going to be playing. The land is more of a benefit in this format because you're not going to be guaranteed to have your opponent having enchantments or artifacts. But at the same time, like there are a fair number of enchantments with like sagas and a fair number of artifacts with the historic theme. Um, so I think it's it's fine um, to be picked up like in the middle of a pack, but it's a cypher card. It's a disenchant. Next up is Corrosive Ooze. It's one green for 2-2. That is, whenever it blocks or becomes blocked by an equipped creature, 
destroy all equipment attached to that creature at the end of combat. Um, so the baseline is a 2 for 2, 2 for 2, and that's fine. And if you're playing against that, like, like red-white equipments and auras deck, it can really mess them up and they don't want to attack into you. Um, but if you're not in that, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is playable, but not great. So, eh, I think it's okay. Um, and it's also one that, like, if you can, just have it in the sideboard and bring it out against that. Like, if they have problematic equipment, or I don't say any equipment. But, um, the thing is, is that a lot of times when it's blocking a good creature, it isn't going to survive that combat. So, um, you're kind of trading it for the equipment which is very situational, but I mean, it also is a 2-2 body, which other dis like disenchant effects don't have. Next up is Elfheim Druid. It's 1 green for an O2 elf with tap at green, or tap at green green, and spend that mana only to cast kicked spells. Um, I mean, a 2 mana mana dork, I, I don't mind. Being an O2 is not great. Like, I kind of like want like my baseline to be kind of like what whatever what the Cal what was the Kalash one? But it was like a 1-3 elf, the tap for green. Um but like adding two mana to get to like if you have some good kicker spells that you want to ramp to, this is this is a solid choice. Um so let's say if you have stuff to ramp into or kicker spells that you might want to like push and the good kicker stuff, run it. Otherwise, I'm not a high priority. O2 body dies to almost everything, so um, if you're not using it for much else other than mana. Next up, we have Fungal Plots, which is one in a green for enchantment, which you can pay one in a green and exile a creature card from your graveyard and create a one-one green Sapperlink token feature token. So it's like a it's a Necrogenesis, um, and you can sacrifice two Sapperlings and gain two life and draw a card. Um, I actually really like this. Um, I mean, the most important point when you're like trying to like figure out like is this card, but like if you're losing and you're like on the back foot, this is a great draw. Um, on turn two, it's not as it's not great, but I mean, if you have no other two draw, but like it's not terrible to just put down. But um, it allows you to just play out some chump blockers and um. And then if you want to chump with them, you can sacrifice them to gain life and draw cards and draw into more answers, so... And on the offensive, it just allows you to just churn through um, your stuff and like turning all of your creatures essentially into... with a little extra mana into turning into a 1-1, one, one, which then can turn into half a card and a life. It's a real solid investment. It's a little dirty, but I like it. I like it a lot. Next up, we have Gaia's Blessing, which is one green for sorcery, which says target player shuffles up to three cards, target cards from your graveyard into their library, draw a card, and whenever it is put into your graveyard from your library, shuffle your graveyard into your library. I'm not huge on this card. It's a reprint with inferior art because the original art is Rebecca Gayart and her art is amazing. But I don't know, like offensively, it's not great because, oh look, you just shuffled some problematic cards that want to recur back in the library where they can now draw them, and that could be a potential problem for you in the future. Alternatively, you put it, you do it to yourself, and oh look, you get to like maybe draw those cards, but it's so unreliable. And you're paying two and a green, like sure it cycles itself, but you're playing two one and a green for this, so... I'm not high on that guy's blessing. It isn't a card I'm going to be running in limited. Next up is Gaia's Protector, which is four mana for a elemental ward. It's a four two, and it must be blocked if able. I mean, its stats are fine, um, and it actually can force a trade with a lot of things in their board. Um, so I think it's fine. Like, if you think of more of it as a removal spell. Um, Actually, wait, no. I was reading it as, it must be blocked by all creatures. Um, kind of like a prize unicorn, but it isn't a prize unicorn effect, which makes me not want it. So if they have a two-power creature, they could just get to trade their worst two-power creature for it, for your four-drop. 
I'm not high in Vexcreen Protector. If it was a all creatures that can must, I'd be very down for this, but it isn't, so I'm not a fan of Gaia's Protector. Next up is Gift of Growth. It is a two minute instant with Kicker 2, and it says untap a target creature, it gets plus two plus two until end turn. If it was kicked, that creature gets plus four plus four until end turn instead. I like this, like, late game, like, early game, like, it's a decent combat trick. Plus two plus two is a decent amount of stats. In late game, when you need, when you just have extra mana lying around, you can either, like, push through for more damage, or, like, win a fight that you, like, your opponent, like, will not see coming. And if you have any of the kicker payoffs, like, this is a really cheap kicker cost to... Okay. Next up is Grow from the Ashes. It's two and a green for sorcery with kicker for two. Search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, and shuffle your library. If the spell was kicked, search your library instead for two basic land cards, and put them onto the library, then shuffle your library. Honestly, limited, I think this is fine. Um, I mean, late game, if nothing else, you get to, uh, like, early game, like, it helps you fix your mana, helps you ramp a little bit. Granted, it's a three drop that doesn't affect the board state, but it can really help you get there. Um, and then late game, it helps you thin out your lands. Um, I mean, this is a set where we've seen there are pretty big spells you can cast, like, that have high in kicker costs. And this, and a lot of sets, like, at, once you're at five mana, ramping to seven mana isn't going to help you that much. But this is a set where, like, that's actually quite nice. As for EDH, I'm honestly probably going to look to put these into almost any green deck I have. Um, I mean, it's not quite as good as, like, it's, if you compare it to, like, Cultivate, which searches for two lands and puts one in your hand and one in your, um, into play, um, it's the same cost as Cultivate, and it doesn't give you that extra land if you just pay the three, but the late game going to five, like, definitely in my Vile Smashers, like, ramp deck is definitely going in there. Um, and if nothing else, I also just need more green ramp sources, <laughs> so it'll be a welcome addition. Next off is Grun, the Lonely King, who is a 6 mana 5-5 five, five, ape warrior with kicker for 3. And if it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with 5 plus 1 plus 1 counters. So if you pay 9 mana for this, it becomes a 10-10. And whenever it attacks alone, double its power and toughness until end of turn. Um, Grun is a beater. Like, Sure, he doesn't get like the power boost on the defense, but he, I mean, he's still a 5-5, five five, which is a hard body to get around. And honestly, even without the kicker, attacking as a 10-10 is really great. Um, yeah, no, he's real solid. I might look at putting him into warriors, but I mean, warriors doesn't want to be attacking alone, really, so I may not want Grun to go in there. But, um, yeah, no. You're a good guy, Grun. And he's also legendary, so that's also relevant. Next up is Kamal's Druidic Vow. Vow? Kamal's Druidic Vow. No, Vow. X green green for legendary sorcery, so hard to cast. Look at the top X cards in your library. You may put any number of land and or legendary permanent cards of converted mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. The rest into your graveyard. I'm not a fan of this, largely because I don't know. You're 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 um. It's hard to cast, and the effect is not good enough in limited to make a thing like in limited. You're not actually going to hit be hitting that many legendaries. So it's mostly going to be a expensive ramp spell, and I'm just not into that in limited. As for construct, on the other hand, I can see this going into Sidisi because um, it puts him in trigger, it helps me ramp, and Sidisi actually wants a fair amount of mana. Um, maybe Vile Smasher, because um, not hitting the legendaries, there are some legendaries, but I can just pump a ton of mana to that and get even more mana for like three CO's activations and whatnot. And then finally, because there is a pretty heavy legendary theme in that deck, I could see also humans maybe taking advantage of Kamal's Druidic Vow. Maybe. I'll test it. Next up is Croson Druid, which is a 3-mana 2-3. Eh. 
but it has kicker for five. And if it, it was in a spell field, it was kicked, you gain 10 life. So, I mean, it, gaining 10 life is not insignificant. I think this card is okay. I think it's okay if you play it, but it's one of those cards that you're not really going to be kicking that often. Like, honestly, if you're, if you're behind enough that 10 life is going to make a big difference in the game, and you're at by the time you get to eight mana, like you're not really getting there at to eight mana at that point. Um and a two three isn't gonna save you either. So I think it's fine, but it's not one you're gonna be kicking a lot and most the vast majority of the time it is just going to be a two three for three. So eh. Next up is a nice uh long wind reprint of Lanawar Elves. It's one green for one win, which taps for green. This is a good this is a good card. Like normally you don't want to be playing one drops unlimited because most one drops aren't that good. This is a good one drop. It ramps you out quickly. I mean it has power so it can turn itself into the red zone and get in when you need to. Um it trades for X ones, unlike that O2 elf. Um Land War Elves. It's a good card. <laughs> Next up is Lanoir Envoy, which is a three mana. 3-2, which is okay. I mean, pay one green to add one mana of any color. So you can pay a green to essentially filter lands. And I think this is fine. Um, like, 3-2 is a fine, is an okay body. And if you need the fixing, this can do good. Like, especially if you want to, like, splash one of the multicolor uncommon legends and things like that. So I think it's fine, but it's not great. Um, and it gets better if you need that fixing. So... Next up is the Lanoir Scout. It's one and a green for one three, and you may tap it and put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I'm not as much a fan of this one. Like, well actually, one three is a decent body, and the ramp potential is there. Um, and the fact that the ramp you get stays around after it dies is nice. Um, I, I, I'm behind. I can get behind Lanoir Scout. Like, if it gets you one land forward, um, that ramped you once in any more times, it's tapping for more, and one three blocks well, so I can get behind Lanoir Scout. Next up is Mammoth Spider, which is a 5 mana 3 5 reach. I think this is a solid card. I mean, 3 5 is a hard body to get around, it's, that is a body, even if it's a little expensive at 5, and with reach that blocks any flyers, and we saw like in blue there's a lot a fair few of like actually really good flyers that you pr green you probably want to make sure you have those contingencies ready to go so i like being a spider it also um the the whatever it's called the new um pounce it pounces very well next up is marwin the nurturer which is two and a green for a one one a legendary elf druid so it has, has um, the elf synergies, although it is the elf synergy, which is whenever an elf enters the battlefield in your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Marvin the Nurturer. So if you have enough elves in your deck and you're able to like, put out these elves, like she can grow quite large and be quite good. Um, because tap her to add green equal to Marvin's power. So she even helps you spam out elves if you need to. I feel she can be really good if you have that critical elf mass. Um, um, and you probably could want at least four other elves before you really are considering using her. But um, once you do, I think she's quite good. Um, and I mean, she's a legendary for all the relevant things for that. So, yeah. Next up is the Mending of Dominaria, which is a five mana saga. And the first and second chapters are Mill 2, so put two top two cards to your library into your graveyard. And you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And three mana, the third chapter is return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. I think this is unlimited. It's very expensive. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, you do get two creatures back, but for five mana, that's very expensive. So I'm not huge on the mending of Dominaria. In terms of decks, like, the first chapters makes you really want to put it into Sidisi, 
but the fact that it shuffles it, your library back to your graveyard makes me not want it in CDC because CDC wants the graveyard full. So I don't really have a deck I want to put this in right now, so the name of Dr. Ryan, not high on. Next up is Multani Yavamaya's Avatar, which is a 6-6 six, six, or 6 mana 0-0 zero, zero, with Reach and Tramble, but it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each land you control and each land in your graveyard. You can also pay 1 green and return 2 lands you control to their hands. Return Multani to your graveyard to your hand. This card is amazing. Like, minimum, it comes down to 6-6 six, six for 6 of Reach and Trample, which is great. And if you have, like, and then it just grows with the game, and it's hard to get rid of forever because you get to, like, return to lands. You, like, you can just, like, return to lands and replay them over time, and late game, that's not much of an issue. Boltani's Grade Limited, um, and List Legendary for things that matter about that, so very good on the Boltani. There's a reason he's mythic. Um, Aster Dex is going in. This is going right into CDC. This goes the fact that it counts as car lands in your graveyard too, and it helps like recurring it if it just mill it. Um, yeah, no, Multani, very good. Next up is Nature Spiral. It's the art. It's it's based on the art for a strip mine. Um, it's one green for sorcery. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. This is okay. I'm not huge on it. Um, but I think it's fine. I think I'll, I'll run one of them in my deck, but I'm not taking it very highly. Yeah. Next up is Pierce the Sky, which is one green for an instant. Pierce the Sky deals seven damage to target creature with flying, which pretty much means destroy target creature with flying. But, um, yeah, I think this, it's, it's good cyborg card. If you have flyers, put them in. If not, I wouldn't run this main board. No, Pierce is high. It's fine. Next up is Primordial Worm, which is a 6 mana 7 6. I know that's fine, like, obviously it doesn't have trample or any sort of evasion, but I mean, you're getting your money's worth for the mana you're putting in, and for like a common 6 drop, I'm happy with this. Obviously, you don't want more than a few 6 drops. Although, as we've seen, Ramp is a decent archetype in, in green, so um, the Sonic, you could probably afford running a few more than you would normally, but um, yeah, no, it's just a solid body. Next up is Sapperling Migration. It's one green for a Sorcery of Kicker, and you get to create two 1-1 one -one green Sapperling tokens. That alone gets you 2-2 two -two worth of power across two creatures. I get behind that. And use Kicker for four. If you make Kick It for six man, you get to four of these tokens. I think this is really great. We also have like a lot. There's Saplings are a real creature type. There's like lots of um, stuff you can do with that. So yeah, no, I'm happy with Sapling Migration. It's a decent card. It helps you really go wide and pop out a board. And yeah. Next up is the Song of Freilies. It's one green for an uh, saga, which says, until you your next turn, creatures you control get tap at one mana of any color. The third chapter is, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and then those creatures get vigilance, trample, and indestructible until the turn. I think this is solid. Like, the first two that you play this, like, probably, you probably want to be playing this about, like, turn four or so, and over the next, like, two turns, you, like, ramp out a bunch of stuff and, um, get a white creatures. And then on the third turn, you could buff your team and kind of like do a, a fair bit of damage with that. Um, do I think it's great? No. Would I run more than one? Probably not. But I think it's fine. I think Song of Rayleigh's is a, is a neat card. And yeah. Also, I love the depiction of Rayleigh's in that card. Even if Rayleigh's was not great. Next up is Spore Swarm, which is four mana for an incident. It just says th create three saplings. I think this is fine. Like instant speed, like three three flash is fine across three creatures. Obviously, it gets better if you have any of the um, sapling bales, but um, yeah, I think it's fine. 
Next up is Spore Crown Thalion, which is one green for fungus. That's 2 2. That says each other creature you control that's a fungus or sapling gets plus one plus one. This is great. Like, this is one of those sapperling playoffs. We've said there's a way to make lots of sapperlings. It's the double the power in that. There's a fair few fungus in the set too. This is a great card. If you, I would, I think it's one of those cards, lords, that you can pick. Like, lords in general are good if you can make them work, but this is a lord for a type of creature that makes tons of that creature, which makes it an amazing lord. I honestly think this is pack one pick oneable. And especially because if you get this early on, you get to like prioritize all those sapling cards, and yeah, no. Great card. I love Spore Crown Thaliad. It's a good card. Next up is the green's uh, triple color card, and that's Steel Leaf Champion, which is a green, green, green for an elf knight, which is says it's a 5 4 for 3 that cannot be blocked by creatures of power 2 or less. This is a great card. This is an amazing card, and Green has the easiest time playing this. You just go turn 1 Land of War Elf, turn 2 Steel Leaf Champion, turn like. Yeah, no, it's a good card. I don't... The stats speak for yourself, and the fact that it also has evasion on top of that is just icing on the cake, so... Steel Leaf Champion, great card. Um, kind of like wants me want to play like uh, Mono Green Stompy and Standard. Next up is Sylvan Awakening, which is 2 and a green for sorcery. Until the end of turn, all lands you control become 2-2 two, two elemental creatures with Reach, Indestructible, and Haste. They're still lands. Um, I actually don't know about this. Like, on one hand, um, I wish it untapped the lands that it made, so it's pretty much you can attack with all but three of your lands, which, I mean, late game, if you have like six, seven lands out, you get to attack with like three, two, two indestructibles, or four, three, two, two indestructibles. But at the same time, I'm not great on these. And I mean, like, you can also hold them back to, like, block, but you don't really want to be doing that. I'm not huge on this card. Um, I might consider testing it in Vile Smasher because it, it gets a ton of lands out and that can be a good damage swing, but I'm not big on self Awakening myself. Next up is or, or back on dinosaurs. Dinosaurs will never go away. Dinosaurs are awesome. But it's Territorial Allosaurus, which is a 4 mana 5 5. I am already behind this. That's great stats. Honestly, they've been really pushing creature stats lately. Um, but Kicker for 3. So for 7 mana, when it enters the battlefield, you get to fight another creature. This is a great card. Its stats alone are great, and if you get it, and it fights really well, and if you can get to that 7, you just get to eat something a lot of the times, and go Dino Go. Good job, Territorial Allosaurus. You're a good card. Next up is Thorn Elemental, which is a 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven, and you may have Thorn Elemental assign its combat damage as if it weren't blocked. So, um... I believe what this means, I haven't checked the judge rulings, but essentially you can like put the stuff in front of it, it will still do 7 damage to you. This is like super trample. So um, I am, this is a great card, like a 7-7 seven, seven trample would be good. This is 7-7 seven, seven tr super trample that can just push through 7 damage when you need to, if you don't care about blocking all of their legions they put in front of you. Like, unless they have a hard move, unless they have a removal spell, which is probably going to have to be a destroy target creature spell, this is at least a 7 damage to the face. So, I am all about this thorn elemental. It's it's a beating. And obviously, like, 7 damage is a lot, but green does have a fair few good ramp sources, so. Next up is Untamed Kavu, which is a 2 mana 2 2, with Vigilance and Trample. Okay, those stats alone, I'm actually fine with. Like, 2 2 Vigilance and Trample is enough that, like, I'm willing to do. Like, Trample on a 2 2 doesn't do much, but yeah. It has Kicker for 3, so if you play it as a 5 mana, it becomes a 5 5 Vigilance Trample. 
this is just a really good rate for the, the things you're having it, and the modality makes it super nice. Untamed Coffee was just a good... In green, there's just so many good bodies, it's almost like green is the creature color. Um, but I know, Untamed Coffee, real solid. Next up is a reprint, it's Verdant Force, which is an 8 mana 7-7, seven, seven, and that says at the beginning of each combat, create a sapperling. If you have the ramp, you, you do need a little bit of ramp to get to 8 mana and to reliably get there, but if you do, this this is calling its parachute dryad combined with a 7-7, seven, seven, which is hard to, like, unlike Tendershoot Dryad, which, like, sure, it had the anthem effect too, and, like, whatnot, but it was a 2-2 and could easily be moment craving. The 7-7s seven are hard to kill, um, so, uh, yeah, no, Burden Force, if you, I, I want to have, like, at least, like, probably a couple, like, ramp cards, be it, like, one of the elves or the, um, the three mana, like, uh, search for land cards that, I mean, Verdant Force is a, is a good, is a solid card if you, if you have the support for it. Next up is Wild Onslaught, which is four mana for an instant. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, but it also has Kicker for four, so for eight mana, you get to put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. I think this is fine. I mean, I suppose like a combat trick and kind of like an overrun-esque effect. Um, especially if you're playing that Sapperling deck, this can add so much power to the board and kind of like cause a lot of problems, so I'm fine with this. Like, I'm not super high on it and you don't want to run more than one, but I think it's okay. Next up is Yavamaya Safred, Safford, which is a 3 mana 2 2, and when it enters the battlefield, make a 1 1. Reminds me of uh, Jungle Worm Pioneer. Um, but yeah, it makes 3 3 powers of toughness of two creatures with like it makes a sapling, which is relevant, and yeah. Well, I think this is fine. It's a fine 3 drop. And yeah. Well, that is all of green for us. So, um, later on today, you can actually get two videos because there's the uh, gold artifacts and lands video, uh, which we'll probably record like right now. <laughs> so, um,. I'll talk to you all later. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you disagree with my ending of my assessments of these cards, well, let me know. I want to get better at this too. So, I hope you're enjoying the series. So, I will talk to you all later. Alright.